In this video, we'll take a look at what's happening in our gateway process in a little more detail. Now, the gateway isn't technically part of our core data capture architecture in KDB, but it very commonly accompanies one. Now, when I say gateway, it's just a term we use for any queue process that abstracts end users away from the core data capture processes like the RDB and the HDB. So there's a few reasons why this is a good idea to have in your architecture. Firstly, it provides a layer of protection for the queue processes. So if users do not use a gateway and instead connect directly to the server process, there's a risk that the user could run a really bad query, which could corrupt the data, bring down the queue process, or even bring down the whole machine. It also serves as a central connection point for users, so they don't have to remember which data is where and which port to point to. And finally, if a user wishes to get data from multiple sources, the gateway can do this on the user's behalf by calling the data processes to retrieve the data and joining them together before returning them to the user, which is what we did in our quick start. So let's look at our code from the quick start again in a little bit more detail. Now in our gateway process, we had a very basic example, which is quite straightforward. It simply opened the handle to both the RDB and the HDB processes, and it defined a function there called getTradeData. And this function took a few parameters, one being the start date, the end date, and a list of symbols to search on. Now, both the RDB and the HDB are queried with a function called selectFunc for this date range and the symbol that the, query, the user has asked for from the gateway. So we can see that the selectFunc API is defined in both our RDB and HDB processes. So we can just check that out here and that was also defined on our HDB. So let's just launch a HDB process here as well. Okay, so we have this select func here as well. Now we don't have any data in our trade table just yet. We actually deleted our database after the quick start, if you remember. So let's just run our end of day function. So first of all, let's have a quick look at our, what we have here. So we've got nearly 20,000 rows here. So I'm gonna run dot u dot end of day. My feed handler has been working away in the background for me since we've done that module. So we've got quite a few more rows and now we can see the trade table has emptied out and it started to fill up again. And when I look at trade now, I do have my rows for the end of day. Now let's see what happens when we launch our gateway and run the get trade data function, just to recap what we did in the quick start. So again, going to the readme and I'm going to pull the last line here, which is our gateway launching. So we're going to run our get trade data function as we defined on our gateway process here and see what we get back. So we're getting rows back for the 16th and we might even have more rows in there as well from our RDB. It's hard to see here because they're truncated. We're going to add a little bit more logic in here just to understand what's happening. So let's say this get trade data API is for a dashboard and in this dashboard, we only want the last record for each symbol returned. So we basically want to reduce this down. So we can add some logic in here using the inbuilt function f by and returning only the result where time is the maximum between those rows. So it's just another way of getting just your latest result for symbol in this example. So I'm going to replace this line here with the code I want to return. And I'm just going to put a semicolon at the front and save that file now. So if we relaunch our gateway, and we rerun get trade data, same thing we had before, you see now I'm only getting one row returned for that result. So instead of returning everything back, it's now filtering it down. Now, if this F by notation is new to you, don't worry, I link the video on filter by where we explain it in a lot more detail. And you see if we can add in multiple stocks here, um, and again, if we run the U dot end of day again, and let's widen our query window to be, say, to the 18th, because now we've moved our day on by one day further. We should see we're getting da dates returned now for over two dates. So you see, I don't need to worry about whether my data is on the HDB or the RDB. I'm getting the data collated for me by the function and reduced down all in one step. So again, abstracting away from the user the nuances of the architecture structure and putting that logic into the gateway APIs is quite a common thing that you would do in your system. Now, some best practices for gateways include running only lightweight code, um, also tracking disconnections and user queries submitted, and returning sensible errors if queries fail. 
You could also add in load management. So round robin might not always be the best option for your system. So you could consider different options specific to your APIs and the load and what your users and system needs. And we have, as with most of these modules, um, a really good white paper describing how to do that, how to do load management, and also one on query routing, talking about scaling that system up. Okay, that's it for this overview on gateway functionality. We learned about some of the common ways users extend the standard behavior and we even extended it ourselves a little bit here. So do try the quiz to test your knowledge on this.